Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making a spoon. Now this is the first time I have ever hand carved a spoon. So this is going to be kind of an experiment for me and one I've been wanting to do for a while. And I want to make it a little more artistic and flowing and uh, yeah, this is gonna be fun. Now it's made out of walnut and it, walnut is normally an easy piece of wood, but this particular piece had some really gnarly chunks to it. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. Let's dive in and take a look at it. For this spoon, I'm gonna be using walnut. Walnut is a fantastic hand tool wood. Extremely smooth, easy to work with. Just one of those things that's a true pleasure with hand tools. After laying out the design with a Sharpie, I'm going to remove most of the waste with a saw and then bring it over to my chopping block and start removing the waste with a hatchet. Or in this case, an ax head on a short stick. <laughs> uh, one of these days I need to get a good hatchet, but uh, I made this one a while ago and it's a, a lot of fun to work with, though it does tire out your wrist fairly quickly. You can see how we basically just put this in the chopping block and start removing the waste. And slowly but surely you remove large chunk after large chunk until you get close to your line. It is a fairly fun process, though uh, with this big head it tends to wear out your arm. <laughs> that being said, I soon switched over to using a chisel in the vise. And if you don't have a hatchet, this is actually a really good answer to the solution. Just chalk it up in the vise and go to town with the chisel and mallet. Soon the chips go flying and you get to see how much fun you have with the chisel. And boy, I love working with a chisel. Now in this particular piece, there was the grain that was a constant problem. It swirled and went everywhere, which for the final piece looks great, but for actually removing the material, it was a pain. So I was constantly having to work with where the grain was going, and in some places that meant going uphill, and some places that meant going downhill. And so you're just constantly learning and listening and doing what the wood grain tells you to do as opposed to what you feel like you should do. And in some cases that was cutting in ways that just made me feel odd. But the grain was going that direction, so I had to apply away that direction. This is just so much fun to bring in these curls and, and swoops and chips. Uh, I, I could do this all day long and, and be very pleased and just go through boards making curls. But in this case, I'm following the line. I'm going to get fairly close to it with this process, just removing the waste and taking it back down. Once you've done most of that, then you can sit back and relax and look at the chips on the floor. And I find this to be incredibly pleasing. Now we have a blank that is ready to work down and get much, much smaller. The handle is way too thick, and so we're going to remove most of the waste with that just using a saw. I thought this was a good opportunity to bring in my Japanese saw and uh, hone my skills on that a little bit more. It is not my favorite saw, but it's a saw I want to learn how to use better, and so that means pulling it out from time to time. Once that's done, we can start shaping the handle. I use a spoke shave to get going on this, and I have several of them in stock that I kind of go back and forth between a flat sole and a round sole, and they allow me to get different angles and get in different, different crevices and work down different things. You don't need all of them, um, just one spoke shave will do you well, but uh, if you do buy one, then you will soon find yourself buying another one and another one. They're, they're quite addictive. But you can see how we're just shaping this handle down, removing material, and bringing it until it's a pleasing shape. There really is no specific shape that this has to fit. It is your spoon, you can make it whatever you want. It is your own happy little spoon. Make it pleasing. Once I get that fairly close to the shape I'm looking for, I bring in a card scraper and use that to really refine the edge and take off the facets left from the spoke shave. This will allow me to get a smooth surface that I'm looking for. And then I'm gonna bring that shape farther and farther down the handle until I start getting near the bowl of the spoon. And here you can start to see how it goes back and forth between the spoke shave and the card scraper to give you that really nice clean design that you just can't get with a power tool. On to the bowl of the spoon, and this is really the fun part because I can grab a gouge and start making these beautiful ice cream curls. They just, they look so much like a chocolate ice cream that uh, uh, I was having fun and getting hungry at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to start from one end of the bowl and start digging down into it deeper and deeper until I get to the depth I'm looking for. And then I can switch around to the other side and come at it from that side. Now on this side, I'm actually running with the grain. You can see how it splinters out ahead of the chisel. So I have to be very careful that the splinters aren't going to cut and rip out material that I don't want them to. After it have come out from both ends, then I can come in from the side. And this is so easy with a good gouge. It just runs across the grain. And again, you get these beautiful ice cream curls that are, uh, well, making me hungry again. Let me stop and go get some ice cream. <laughs> I'm just going to slowly keep 
coming in further and further and taking off smaller bites and smaller bites and getting rid of these facets until I'm kind of getting to diminishing point of return. Then I can bring in my hook knife and scrape it out and smooth it out. This is kind of the, the finishing process of this, though we'll do a few more processes to kind of smooth it out a little bit better. But a good hook knife makes quick work of this. In some cases, you're not actually cutting or carving, but you're actually using like a scraper. And that actually works fairly well to give you that nice clean line. You can go across your marks from the, uh, the chisel. Just be careful not to slice up your thumb like I did in this one. Oops, oh well. <laughs> You'll see a Band-Aid come out here soon. But here you can see how much fun this whole process is and having this time in the shop is just enjoyable. Next, we can flip it over and start working on the outside of the bowl. And it's much the same as the inside, except for in this case, it's much easier because you're not working inside of something, you actually can work around it. So I'm gonna go back and forth between a gouge and a bench chisel and start removing the waste from the outside. Once I get it close to the shape again, I'm gonna bring in the spoke shaves and the card scraper and smooth that out and start to get that feel that I'm looking for. This ends up taking quite a bit of time because there's a lot of material to lose. And you're trying to bring it down close to the thickness so that it's not a really thick and heavy spoon. You want the wall thickness to be less than a quarter inch thick. And uh, that can be really difficult. You have to take off a lot of material and every time you feel like you're getting close, you're worried about taking off too much. But you can probably still take off a lot more. So I'm gonna slowly be going back and forth between the bench chisel and the gouge, removing the majority of the waste. One of the hardest points is actually up at the point because then you're actually working cross grain. And so I remove most of the waste with the bench chisel and then come in with the spoke shave and do the final clean out on it. The spoke shave gets rid of a lot of the facets from the chisels and then a card scraper can come in and remove all the facets from the spoke shave. And you get that slowly refining process. But a good sharp blade makes very quick work, especially up here at the tip where you're going across the grain and into that end grain that just is a very difficult section. At the back of the bowl, um, this is what took the most time because the grain back here was just swirling and going everywhere. But I found a really nice sharp gouge just taking small chunk after small chunk after small chunk got down into there. After that, I'll hit it with a spoke shave and then bring in the card scraper and really start smoothing this all out because from this point on, the spoon is done. We just want to make it more pretty. Uh, you could use it, it's functional, but uh, we want to slowly work at it with a card scraper, getting rid of all the facets, taking everything down and checking if it's pleasing, making any changes where we need to. Just have a little bit of fun here. I'm going to be using this gooseneck card scraper to hit the inside of the bowl and this allows you to do the, the final cleaning on the inside here. I do have a video on sharpening one of these and another one on making one, so if you want to look up that, uh, just search for Wood by Wright, how to make a card scraper, and you'll come across that video. But uh, yeah, just keep at it a little bit by little bit and you can work your way down. And yes, here I am going to use sandpaper. It doesn't take too much at this point because I've cleaned it up fairly well, but I want to allow it to absorb a little bit more finish. So we'll rub it all down with this, give it that final smoothness, and then take it on for finishing. This is that last moment where you can check everything, make sure that all of your lines have been removed, that everything is smooth and clean and pretty, and uh, you can be very happy. Boiled linseed oil, my favorite. This is a homemade boiled linseed oil, so it's food safe for the spoon here. And oh yes, I love how it brings out the color in this walnut, just absolutely gorgeous. Nothing works like this. Bring this in, let it sit for a while, probably 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes, put another coat on it back and forth, three or four coats, and then I'll wipe it off. I'm just letting a little bit rest in between. After it's dried for a little while, then I'll bring in some paste wax, rub that in, let that soak and dry into the wood. And then once that has had uh, 30, 40 minutes to harden a bit, then I'm gonna bring a rag in and wipe off the paste wax. Get that really nice shine, that beautiful walnut look. And this is what makes me very happy. You can start to see the color from the grain and everything popping on this. Oh, if you can't tell, I'm excited. This is a project that I am in love with. It is my first spoon, and there will be many, many more to come. So there you have it. This would be a, uh, a fun project if you have a few hours in the shop. It's really not that hard. It took me about three hours or so, but with a couple gouges and a knife to slice up your thumb, uh, you can have a little bit of fun. This is a, a really enjoyable project for just kind of a slow meditation. So I'm probably gonna be doing something similar to this in the future. So I hope you like this project. Um, if you did, like, comment, share, it really does help out the channel. Also, if you wanna help out the channel with Patreon or um, buying t-shirts or card scrapers, you can find those on my website. 
So that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.